in an unconscious patient, follow the standard airway, breathing, circulation protocol, and always check blood glucose levels to rule out hypoglycemia. The use of automated external defibrillators is safe and effective for children in cardiac arrest. A pre-excitation syndrome, such as Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome, should be considered in the context of syncope and an abnormal ECG showing delta waves. AV nodal blocking agents such as diltiazem or esmolol are contraindicated in atrial fibrillation associated with pre-excitation syndromes such as Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. For every minute that goes by without defibrillation, the chance of survival decreases by 7 to 10 percent. The umbilical vein is the preferred vascular access for delivering intravenous medications to newborns. Target temperature management involves cooling the patient's body temperature to 32 to 36 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. During CPR, the rescuer should allow for complete chest recoil after each compression. Early coronary angiography and percutaneous coronary intervention are recommended for OCA patients with ST elevation myocardial infarction noted after ROSC. Current guidelines recommend against the routine use of calcium for asystole or PEA. Sodium bicarbonate may be considered for patients with cardiac arrest due to hyperkalemia or drug overdose. Cardiac arrest in pregnancy requires left lateral uterine displacement to improve maternal circulation. Routine endotracheal suctioning for infants with meconium-stained amniotic fluid is not recommended unless airway obstruction is suspected after positive pressure ventilation. A rising heart rate is the most important sign of effective ventilation and a positive response to resuscitation in a newborn. Multimodal neuroprognostication should be performed at a minimum of 72 hours after return to normothermia. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, Feel free to leave a comment below in the comment section.